Yo, what is happening? I hope everyone's having a great day because we have the bolts. I'm getting the electrical feeling. I got the supercharger revving up in the background. Boo, boo, we're ready to go because the LA superchargers are rocking out here and we going to go ahead and go through this roster. Talk about what they have done in free agency, which Wow, they have been very, very busy, man. Telesco has been rolling out with some fire, setting the AFC West on alert, high alert, because this team's going to be dangerous. But they still do have some areas that we need to fine-tune, improve, so we'll look at that, and we will get into a seven-round mock draft. Hope everyone is having a great day, but... Let's go ahead and dive into it and talk about the offense first and foremost. What do they need to improve? Not Justin Herbert, the franchise quarterback. You got him. Lock him in, of course. The big areas of need. It's glaring. The right side of the offensive line needs to be improved. It's a little brutal depth-wise, too. Now, let's hold off the buzz because you do still have Adeya Bushi. He's a guy that they can bring back. Michael Schofield, those two things. Adeya Bushi, of course, coming off that season and the injury. They should be able to get him back pretty cheap, but that is still a question mark whether or not he will return. So my view on it, though, is they're going to at least bring in one starter, right? I mean, you got to figure on that they'll bring in at least one guy and then they end up drafting another guy. So we're going to kind of take that for, for what it is. But for right now, you do have a couple of holes. I'm, one of my guesses, too, that I was thinking about and going through this, I was like, Daryl Williams would be an interesting one for them to put because he might want to say, you know, I want to move back over to the right tackle position. Maybe not the most athletic guy, perfect, you know, for this scheme or whatever, but I still think he could work. Put him in over that right tackle spot. He's one of those dudes that is still out there on the market. So we'll keep an eye out on that, but would assume that they bring back at least someone and then could bring, you know, maybe bring someone else in. But offensive line, no matter how you shake it, we're going to be looking at that and trying to improve the offensive line because we need to make sure we're protecting this quarterback and Justin Herbert. We don't want him ending up, you know, with, with broken legs or nothing like that. So we keep Justin Herbert upright. Offensive tackle, offensive guard is my number one priority. Now, the only way that I would say, because the other areas of need, I would say maybe another receiver in here, because you have Jalen Guyton and also Josh Palmer competing for that third, fourth receiver right now. So... If, if Jamison Williams is there at number 17, that's the only way that I'm drafting a receiver at 17 overall because what he would bring to this offense would be insane. I mean, the combination and the skill set that they would have, the AFC West is already insane, but if you added in Jamison Williams with Keenan Allen and Mike Williams, it's probably one of the best receiving cores in the NFL, or at least in my view, it would be up there. So that's the only receiver that I'm taking in the first round. Besides that, though, maybe we take a late dart throw at it. But I think between Josh Palmer and Jalen Guyton, you can get yourself a good, solid third, fourth receiver. Not to mention their tight end group looks really good. Gerald Everett can, you know, stretch the field a little bit. I like Dylan Parham. I knew he had that nasty injury, the, the brain. Uh, hopefully he's doing all good there. It was a weird one where he was stuck in that pose. He was like knocked out. But Trey McKitty, I think he also can develop here. What was he, a third, fourth round selection last year out of Georgia, another athletic tight end. Give him some time to progress along. So it's not that they don't have receiving weapons, but we could look at that. Mainly though, offensive line, maybe a backup running back. I know they've been looking for a number two for a while. Maybe they end up making a trade for someone. I know Saquon Barkley has been a rumor out there, but I wouldn't give up a whole ton of assets. I mean, if it's like a second or third rounder, I would consider it at that point. But, you know, where you're at right now, Austin Eckler, you got Joshua Kelly, Larry Roundtree. That's a that's a good group still. You know, Austin Eckler is a heck of a back. So tackle, maybe another receiver and a backup running back if we want to throw another dart at it. But overall, mainly offensive line is my number one priority. And one other thing that I will say is that Matt Filer could be a guy that you, in a pinch, move over to the right tackle position. He was playing right tackle at Pittsburgh for a bit. So if you needed him to, you could do something like that. And Trey Pipkins is a guy, I mean, I don't, I'm not saying he's a terrible player because he did actually step up there if, at the end of the season. And he played decent, right? I'm just saying you're still going to need to add competition. Storm Norton, yes, he has the physical upsides, but we don't want what happened last season to make sure we, we improve on that, right? We don't want the playoffs 2.0. We need to make sure that uh, that right side is protected. And you have Bre Brennan James, who I think he was like a late round dart throw. I think he's from Nebraska. He's like fifth or sixth round selection, maybe, even, I don't know, somewhere in the later rounds. So, and then Ryan Hunter, but either way, we're going to improve that right side. I'm just saying, Matt Filer does have some ability to move over 
sort of right tackle if you needed him to. And then you could look for some guards between Adea Bushi and Michael Schofield or whatever in the draft. So that if that's an easier spot for you to fill, but no matter what, yeah, offensive line. And then on the defense side of the ball, I would say the biggest areas of need would be starting with the linebacker position. Adding another linebacker because their rotation right now with Kenneth Murray, Drew Tranquil, like they can get it done there. And then Nick Niederman as maybe your third linebacker. You'd have a man, Ogo. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna butcher the name. I've tried learning his name, but man, it's tough. It doesn't roll out the tongue too easy. We've got some special teamers out there, but their main rotation here is Nick Niederman, Drew Tranquil, and also Kenneth Murray. So between those three guys, it's not bad. And in the scheme, you know, they can get away with it at the linebacker position, but adding some more help, maybe in the third, fourth round would be an area I would look at. It's sweet spot for them. So that's something we could look at. And then after that, I would say just cornerback depth, edge depth is definitely a big need. You got uh, Mezzi, Ekebuel, and then Chris uh, Rumpf there as, as your you know third, fourth edge rushers. Obviously, Cleo Mack, Joey Bosa are going to be playing a ton, but finding another backup pass rusher to help those guys out wouldn't be a bad option. Same thing we talked about with the cornerback room. Like, I like Michael Davis. I like JC Jackson and Asante Samuel, but I, saw, I, I, I said, on, <laughs> that was kind of like, that was what I was around. I'm like, wait a minute, is this Osemite Sam out here? <laughs> but anyway, you got Asante Samuel kind of give you that ring, but and you got Damon Hall as a backup there with Trevon Campbell as kind of like a fourth corner for them. And I could, look, this is just kind of the way I have it pictured right now, but I could see JC Jackson taking on that Jalen Ramsey role and playing a slot in the slot a good amount, just depending on how they utilize him. But I could see it, you know, depending on the receiving matchups and whatnot. So watch out for JC Jackson to hit up the slot a little bit more and Brandon Staley's defense, which is such a pivotal role for him. So overall, though, their cornerback room is looking great. Just need a little bit more depth. Same thing I'll say about the edge room, um, you know, whatnot. And then finally, safety-wise, they've got a lot of guys here. You're, you figure on Nasir Adderley and Derwin James, you're one, two, and they're going to play those guys a ton. Maybe Aloha Gilman as your third safety, Trey Marshall. You got some other guys, Ben DeLuca and, you know, Sam Webb. But overall, maybe we could pick up another safety later. Who's you know, Do you feel great about Aloha Gilman being your third safety? That's, that's the only question I would have there. But for me, it's not a big need, um, you know, other than that. Though, interior defensive line, I, I like what they have. I mean, you could upgrade from an Austin Johnson or a Jerry Tillery, but Austin Johnson should be able to come in and be decent. Sebastian Joseph Day, you got to figure on those are your, you know, your primary players there. We're going to play a lot of reps, barring injuries, of course. But Sebastian Joseph Day, the familiarity with the scheme. Austin Johnson, who's a good quality player, can come in. And especially when you have guys like Joey Bosa and Khalil Mack, you'll be just fine. And their rotation, Joe Gaziano, Chris Covington, you know, Brandon Fajoko, it's fine. Like, they're, they're overall, they're fine. If Jordan Davis is there at the top of the first and there's like a huge run on offensive linemen, then sure, I'm, you know, I'm not going to hate you on that. Like that's a really, that's one of those things where you just go out and take BPA sort of thing. But and that defensive line would be even crazier. Just imagine Jordan Davis out there. But I think he might be gone at this point, which, you know, again, no big deal. I think their defensive line can get the job done. I still see it as being a top five level defensive line with the talent they've had. So to wrap it all up with the, the needs, I'm going to say offensive line, maybe another receiving talent later on. A linebacker is probably the biggest need on the defense side of the ball. And then just adding depth with, with some of these positions that are a little bit thin right now. So it is draft time and let's go ahead and get right into it here for the first round selection. They're going to be taking Zion Johnson out of Boston College. And this is my thing with taking offensive linemen. I feel like a lot of teams reach for tackles. But you know what? I would rather have a guy that I feel really, really good about with Zion Johnson. I think he's going to be able to plug right in at one of those guard positions. He could play tackle in a pinch, but put him over at your right guard or left guard position. You want to move Matt Filer over to right guard. He gives you that versatility. Now you have something and a good strength. Just take best offensive line available. You know what I mean? Like, don't chase it. I would rather have three great offensive linemen. And if they were all on the interior, let's say you had two great guards in a good center, but your tackles weren't very good. You know what? It is what it is, right? You can scheme a little bit more around it. Yes, you would ideally want one of those positions to be a tackle, but you could work around it. You know what I mean? Like you can do things. I would just rather take good offensive linemen. That is my view. And you have Rashawn Slater, but you add Zion Johnson, and now you have Corey Lindsley, Zion Johnson, Matt Filer, and Rashawn Slater 
four good offensive linemen. You can put out a tight end and ship the right side if you really need to. You know what I mean? And in Zion Johnson, Matt Filer, you can move those guys. It doesn't really matter. I think Zion can play right guard. You know, Matt Filer definitely can move over to the right side. So you have your offensive line constructed of really four good offensive linemen. Next pick here, we're going to go ahead and take a linebacker, Troy Anderson. And Troy Anderson, Uber athletic freak, of course. And he's just a dude that needs a little bit more time coming from a small school there in Montana stay which that's not a knock on him but the area I will say his biggest weakness was getting sucked in times at least when I watched him was play action fakes a lot of times he would bite on that but in terms of the prowess and the leadership that he has and what he brings to a football team absolutely going after this guy here in the third he can be a great pairing for you and a number three linebacker behind Kenneth Murray and Drew Tranquil and you know with Darren Nick Niederman so you got yourself another linebacker here then we get into the fourth round and I'm just taking more offense of line prowess at least knowing what I know now this could easily change but I'm gonna take a shot on someone like Rashid Walker not getting a whole ton of hype I like him I still do and I want to love the traits and what he can be I feel like the coaching maybe just little things you know what I mean like you can get him better at the next level and I feel like he will be better and you know what I wouldn't say that he can't play right tackle I feel like he might be able to move over there you could at least give him a shot if nothing else you're getting yourself a swing tackle you definitely need to do it the depth in that offensive line is very very thin right now then we we go on to a guy who super shifty man Josh Johnson this dude is an unbelievable route runner really really good the problem with him he can't catch right now right but you know what maybe with some time hitting those machines you know, go hit the baseball jugs get the footballs rolling there go catch some bricks he could definitely get a lot better because he has all the tools and the shake and bake the great route running there from Tulsa keep an eye on Josh Johnson very much a dude that could easily come up and be a really underrated receiver adding some more help in the slot you know with Keenan Allen you can move him out wide too but getting some more help there at receiver Mikel Wright is going to be the next pick here just adding more cornerback depth that's the way I see it he can be a fourth fifth corner for you obviously doesn't have to come into the starting role or nothing like that just going to be some more backup help at that cornerback position which is so important then we get into the edge rushing position Ali Foya, the defensive lineman out of Western Michigan. And this dude has got an extreme motor, man. He comes at you. He had like three sacks for his ball state. That tape is unbelievable, man. Go watch that one if you want to see some fun one with Ali Foya. This guy is a, uh, a wrecker, man. And he also has some good plays in the East-West Shrine Bowl as well. So in the one-on-one, so it's really good there. So let's go ahead and take a shot as a third, fourth edge rusher here from Ali Foya, a defensive lineman out of Western Michigan. Then we get into the seventh round picks, and this is where it's tough. You know, it's just the end of the round, end of the draft. I'm just kind of throwing picks at it. So if you want to, you know, throw different ideas out there. Uh, Jay Sean Corbin, though, running back out of Florida State as maybe a fourth running back behind, you know, what you got here in Larry Roundtree and Joshua Kelly. But that's fine. You know, just taking another chance at the running back spot, not overly investing in it. Next pick, Jordan Jackson out of Air Force. Yeah, let's go. You know, get the Air Force going. You got a Top Gun Maverick coming out here. I'm ready to go, and we'll be seeing them. Man, I'm excited. I just watched Top Gun recently for the first time. A crazy good movie. But Jordan Jackson going to be the pick here. He's got some tools. Six foot five, two eighty five. Needs maybe put on a little bit more, but I think he can work here. Just be some more. You know, he's going to practice squad guy probably early on in his career. Maybe he can make a team later on and be someone for you down the line. Next, we're going to go ahead and take Quentin Lake. He gives you some versatility, whether it's at the cornerback in the slot position and or at safety. Six foot one. 200 pound range so you get yourself some more depth there at the safety cornerback position why not heck I don't know you know again at this spot I'm just like throwing out guys and names and stuff like that and then finally we're going to finish out with a backup center in James Empey out of BYU and that's all we're going to do here just backup center behind Corey Lindsley you got your center of course and we'll take a look at the draft and what we've been able to do but as I was saying earlier with the offensive line just take the best offensive lineman available now I feel great about four offensive of linemen whereas like if you take Trevor Penning yes you might he might be able to plug into your right tackle position and be great at some point but you don't know right you don't know and sometimes teams chase upside and I get it but at the same time Zion Johnson I feel so so great about Kenyon Green wouldn't be a bad option either maybe he gives you some versatility to play over at the tackle position but Zion Johnson plug him right in at day one and I feel good that he's going to be a quality level guard maybe give you that Elijah Vera Tucker level of play so now you only have one tackle position to fill and you can do that in free agency right we talked about Daryl Williams or whatever's right you know someone's going to want to come over here to L 
UCLA and protect Justin Herbert. So I'm not super worried about that. But we now have four good offense linemen, not to mention you got a chip or whatever from Gerald Everett. Donald Parham can help you out there, you know, and whatnot. So, and then we finish it all up. We add in some receiver help with um, Joe Johnson, and then we add a running back and just Jay Sean Corbin. Oh, yeah. I mean, we'd add some more offensive line that we talked about James Epps, Epi, and then also Rashid Walker, who could be a guy. I like him to a lot. So we'll see how things go if he can develop into a right tackle for you. Then on the defense side of the ball, our big addition, Troy Anderson. Yes, he might just be a third linebacker for you early on, but he does have those tools and that upside. I think he can be a leader of this defense and really help them out, facilitate everybody around here. Besides that, though, just adding a lot of depth, right? Just a lot of depth with Mikel Wright, Ali Foyad, you know, Josh uh, Jackson there, and Quinn Lake, and yeah, all that good jazz. So that's really all we've been able to do here. Nothing too crazy, but hey, I feel like overall this defense is popping and they got a really good shot overall. So I'm excited to see what the Chargers are going to be up to this season. Brandon Staley is going to be out here firing on all cylinders in his second season. They got the scheme down. Justin Herbert going into his third year. I'm, I'm pumped, man. It's going to be a fun one, AFC West. But let me know what you think. Let me know what situations and what areas you'd like to go at and all of that. My name is Sling. I'm doing my thing. And I hope you do as too. I'll talk to you later.